Hey guys, Ron here, and yeah, admittedly, there are a handful of Pokemon who are not as good as they can be, so that's why in this series, we're gonna make these Pokemon better. Even the worst Pokemon, in my opinion, have so much potential, and I just want to express all the different ways we could not only be critical, but constructively critical. In this video, we'll pick some Pokemon and look at how a few changes to the design, stats, evolutionary chain, move pool, or even color scheme can make these Pokemon more appealing. And I'm not saying any of these Pokemon are bad. Even pizza can be made better. That's what toppings are for, guys. I actually enjoy all of the Pokemon I picked for this video, but I hate seeing fans unhappy. So we might as well change or add stuff to these Pokemon without creating completely different Pokemon from what we had from the start. Keep in mind that every series I make needs engagement for it to continue, so if you enjoyed in the end, leave a like and share, and also tell me the Pokemon you want to make better and how. The first Pokemon up to the plate is Dredigan. People seem to dislike it for its below average stats when compared to other dragons at least. While I actually really like Dredigan, I would totally understand if it was your least favorite dragon type. It's super slow, admittedly because its head is huge and heavy and its wings are small, but its defense is good and its attack is great, but again, not compared to any other dragon type. Does its mono dragon typing make it less appealing as well? I don't believe so since Haxorus isn't unpopular, but then again, it looks pretty sick. So other than its stats, which we can easily change in a speculative video like this, what are the main reasons even casual fans dislike Drudigan? The most common gripe I hear through the grapevines is how its color scheme is off-putting. People don't like how its face is red and its body is blue. Now I appreciate how it resembles a red-headed Rakugama, especially since this Pokemon's head is rock hard, but I get it. If you don't like the color, you don't like the color. People also think its head is clunky and that its wings are puny. I guess it just looks like a disproportionate mess to most fans, but is it designed to be ugly? That's the question, because this Pokemon takes inspiration from things that look weird and funky, like the Welsh dragon, gargoyles, and depictions of dragons as smaller beasts with multiple colors. But how do we make it more appealing to players without losing these origins? Before we go to the extreme roots, let's do something simple, like making its wings larger and head smaller. This way it fits to our preconceived notions of what a European dragon should look like. It's less top-heavy now. But this is nothing. Red and blue clash as colors, so why not make this Pokemon showcase complementary colors, like gold and navy? It's a slight change that makes a difference. But what about an entirely different concept? How about making it completely red, like the Welsh Dragon, also alleviating the problem of its clashing colors? It's more intimidating too. How about a version that is closer to the rocks that its head is supposed to mimic? What would look even better is this version, that resembles gargoyles and just looks way more scary. But I think one of my favorite variants is the dark blue version. It's a popular color, so how can we go wrong? I think color is subjective in general, so pick whichever you like. But I think the number one issue people have is how this Pokemon isn't part of an evolutionary family. There's a limit to how high we can make its stats if it never evolved, but if it has a pre-evolved form, we can add 30 or 40 more points to its base stat total. While I'm not completely in love with this design by Likibaka, something along this line would work. But would that mean Drudigan would have to look more evolved? I think people already think it's over-designed, even though that's kind of what this Pokemon is supposed to look like. If people did want it to look more fierce, I think this Mega Drudigan by Maniacal Mew wouldn't be bad at all. We can even boost its speed stat this way, and people would love that. But the most I can do without a Mega is give this Pokemon a boost in its defenses and even attack. That way, its defense and attack go from good to really nice. I don't think it would be realistic to give this Pokemon a high speed stat. However, it would be super useful if it was a bit faster and had some recovery moves like Drain Punch. Honestly, it's always hard trying to change a Pokemon for the better when the things people don't like about it are all part of this Pokemon's concept. That holds true even more for the second Pokemon we're gonna try to make better, Unknown. This little dude was hyped up so much during Gen 2 that it was practically treated like a legendary Pokemon in the third movie, even though it isn't, and was technically a featured Pokemon in the Gen 2 games. But why? You're setting this Pokemon up for disappointment, considering it's one of the worst Pokemon you could choose in battle. But you know me, a Pokemon's worth isn't about whether or not it's good in battle. It does have some good lore and an appropriate design. But why make fans collect them all for no satisfying reason? It has terrible stats, one move, and is a waste of time. How can we fix it? Well, super easily. Now that's not actually a diss. I'm not saying that it's easy to know where this Pokemon went wrong. I, I mean, I am, but I'm also saying that the basis, that being the concept of the Pokemon, is already amazing. This Pokemon lore-wise is very fleshed out. Alone, unknowns useless, but together they're able to alter reality. In fact, it's speculated that these Pokemon are as old as Arceus and helped him create the universe. The cutscenes we see in Heart Gold and Soul Silver are almost evidence of this claim. So we just need a way to access this monumental power. Obviously, levitate 
update is an ability that makes sense, so I can leave it as it is. But there are so many ways we can go about updating its moveset. How about giving it the ability to learn four different types of hidden power, or just give it a normal moveset? But again, I get it, it's useless alone. So how about Unknown's hidden power getting a boost based on how many other Unknowns are in its party? How about if you have a full team of different Unknowns, they combine to make Unknown's ultimate form? one that can access the power it has to bend reality. I'd assume bending reality is super effective in battle. It doesn't really need a visually different form or even an evolution like Melmetal. It could just be a whole bunch of unknown, so the whole collecting aspect has some kind of point. Its design isn't bad, it makes sense. It's an ancient hieroglyph. How about each letter can access a different move? I don't know, do something! Come on! Hey, I'm just one unknown, man. Okay, even if we change nothing in terms of battle and design, the number one thing I believe people overlook is how this Pokemon could have had an overarching story that is expanded on in each generation. Instead of making it interesting in the competitive scene, let's at least make it interesting in each game. Whenever you collect all of them, you show them to some guy and he tells you more about their lore, or they can literally come together to distort reality and show what they're all about. Maybe display things that Unknown have helped create in the past. Each game could have had a post-game Unknown mission, and over the span of many generations, we can be closer and closer to unlocking the mystery of the Unknown, learning how this Pokemon world was formed. Gen 3 gave us two new Unknowns, and Gen 4 expanded on their role. We should have also saw how they played a part in Unova's ancient civilization, and could have even be somehow related to Sigilyph. Gen 6 could have incorporated them into the story of Mega Evolution, and honestly, it would have been perfect if we saw Unknown in the background while we ultra warp ride through dimensions, as if Unknown exists between universes. I'm looking to Gen 8 for an expansion of this Pokemon's role in the franchise, because it has a lot of potential. Our third Pokemon is Farfetch'd, one of the weakest Pokemon without an evolution. It doesn't even have a gimmick, like Smeargle or Spinda. Now the problem with Farfetch'd whole concept is that it's supposed to be a joke. It's a pun on a Japanese saying which translates to a duck comes bearing green onions, which is used to refer to surprising yet convenient circumstances. Its Japanese name is literally an abbreviation of this saying. So how do we make this Pokemon a serious contender when it's not supposed to be? The answer is by not giving a Shinx. Even though it has no business being good, wouldn't making it amazing at battle be hilarious? But it's not like we don't have a small single stage bird Pokemon that is a great fighter. Halucha is just that. So let's just give it all the stats. We can honestly just take Halucha's stats and switch the attack and speed. If you think that's too gracious, then we could give the stat boost to its Mega. After all, Pokemon like Mawile and Sableye with similar base stat totals have gotten a Mega. So these are my favorite Mega Farfetch'd designs. But after all, what has Farfetch'd ever done for you? Why does it deserve a Mega? So if we couldn't give it its Mega a design boost, let's just give Farfetch'd a makeover. It is rather boring in the color department, so base its color scheme on a mallard. After all, say it with me guys, there's nothing mean about adding some green. <laughs> wow, good job. But let's not stop there. Here's a version I made that has a green head, cooler eyes, and a more complicated eyebrow feather. Again, it's still far-fetched, but with slight changes. A thing you can actually do right now is let it hold a stick, which increases the critical hit ratio of far-fetched by a lot. But what about typing? What if it was an actual grass type that created leaks? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how that would work. Yes, it would have more weaknesses too, but then we'd have an excuse to add more green and just make the design more interesting. What if it was a fighting type, and since every fighting type specializes in a different form of martial arts, this fighting Farfetch'd could be a bow staff master, kind of like this mega Farfetch'd. But the ultimate element that would make this Pokemon more popular would have been an evolved form. When you think about it, any Pokemon would benefit from an evolution, giving it the ability to use an Eviolite. And it just so happens that it did evolve in the beta for gold and silver. Madam is therefore an official Farfetch'd evolution, and this rendering by Tommy Case is phenomenal. This would totally make Farfetch'd a more likable Pokemon. I love how the eyebrows became a mask. There's a real fluidity among the family. It works a little too well. This would have been so easy to include. I was worried that Game Freak wanted Farfetch'd to stay as a joke, but they obviously had plans to take it seriously. And if you were to ask me how to make Farfetch'd better, this would be the best and most faithful way. And now we have time to showcase a few more Pokemon who could be better, but are either already pretty awesome, or just don't need much to change, so they really don't need more than a few sentences to address. Maybe you guys can help me in the comment section so we can think of ways to make him better. How can we make Raichu better without giving it a separate form like Alolan Raichu? I want to hear other ways that'll make this Pokemon as popular and more adorable than Pikachu, if that's even possible. I personally don't love Quagsire as much as Wooper, so how can it match the awesomeness of its pre-evolved form? Silcoon and Cascoon have justifyingly boring designs. How can we spice them up? 
without, you know, actually spicing him up. And Arceus is far from a bad Pokemon, but I still think it's either missing something or I don't, I don't really know actually. These are Pokemon I probably won't cover since I want this potential series to focus on the Pokemon that really do need change. So again, if you want this series to continue, make sure to leave a like and tell me which Pokemon you'd want to make better and how. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and follow me on Twitter, especially if you have any designs to show me. And check the description for the music I used, the shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, and I'll see you guys very soon.